Welcome to the manufacturer. As promised in the last bass drum pedal video, here's another modification. This time the spring system is getting renewed. Or I try to, to say the truth. I designed a system in CAD that is based on the balancing spring. I started by cutting out some parts with my little bandsaw. The circles are going to be the base and get attached to the pedal by a bearing in the middle. The gear wheel will get screwed to the base. Sawing them was hard for my little bandsaw because the material was very thick. I made myself a grinding table out of wood and formed the base and the gear wheels to circles with correct measurements. To prevent the parts from getting too hot, I often switched between them. Once everything was ground to size, I marked where the points of the teeth are going to be. This gave me an additional reference line to work with while I was filing. I started by using a very rough file with one blunt side to form the basic shape of each tooth. This file makes good progress but does not give a good surface finish. Also, there are spots that can't be reached with this file. Therefore, I used my small needle files to get the desired profile and a way better surface finish. This step was very time intensive. One down, one more to go. For the second wheel, I used the first one as a reference and guidance. This way, the gear wheels got very close to each other. You can see me use a little clamp in addition to the vise. This assures that the wheels don't move relative to each other when I turn them. Here are the teeth finished. The next step on the wheels is to drill the holes. Therefore, I center punched them. These are 3.3 mm holes for M4 threads. I used the first wheel to mark the position on the second wheel. To minimize the file work, I used the whole source to remove the material in the middle. I clamped the work pieces together again and filed them simultaneously. After that, I tapped the M4 threads. The gear wheels are finished for now, so all the holes in the base are getting drilled. First, a 16mm hole for the bearing.
then the 4.5mm through borings. I deburred the through borings so that the screw will be flush with the surface. To be able to grab the base better, I filed in 6 notches. Last step for the base is to fit in the bearings. For that, I used my center punch to make 4 notches, on which the bearing can rest. Then I glued in the bearing and made 4 notches on the other side to sandwich the bearing between the notches. Here are the bearings locked in place. Now the gear wheels can be screwed to the base. The next part is a mechanism to lock the gear wheels. For that I cut the steel off camera with my angle grinder and ground them to a size with my improvised disc grinder. I ground them till they were close to the desired measurements and hand fired the rest for more precision. One of the pieces needed a cutout, so I filed in a start with my triangular file for my handsaw. Afterwards, I used a file to smooth it out and file a taper. Then I drilled all the holes, I deburred, countersung and tapped the holes off camera. Because these parts will be welded, I sanded off the scale. For the lock mechanism I needed an M8 screw with a big top, so I cut some threaded rod and some steel to make the heads from. I tapped the heads, made them round and filed in 4 notches. For the lock there needs to be a spring mechanism, so I drilled a hole in the rods. Here are all the lock parts. I welded everything together off camera. After that I cleaned the welds and put on black varnish, firstly to protect the steel against corrosion and secondly to hide the crimes of my welding abilities. I had to create a way to attach the spring to the pedal. I slotted MN8 nut and the gear wheel. For the nut I started with my Dremel and finished with a saw. For the gear wheels I just used the saw blade because the saw itself was either too big to fit inside the gear wheel or too small to fit outside. The end of the springs fit just fine in the slots. Now the problem starts. 
In this test assembly you can see that the ratchet mechanism doesn't work, but I decided to go without it instead. So I put in the spring in place anyways. Something I didn't thought about earlier is that the resting position of the beta would be at the extreme back end, because the spring tries to extend fully. This could have been an interesting thing, because the pedal should feel significantly different while playing. You can see the beta returning aggressively to the back end position. The more urgent problem is that there's a slight detent feeling when the beta is all the way at the end. But once you've overcome this feeling, the spring tension is very low in comparison to what I'm used to with a spiral spring. I'm not too sure how to fix this. Maybe a harder spring would fix this, but I really don't know how to find one. It is very hard to find good information like spring characteristics online and my local hardware store is very poorly equipped with springs. Another idea I had came while rewatching this video. I noticed that no matter how hard I tensioned the spring, only the outer rings tensioned whilst only the inner circuits were moving. In my opinion, that is due to the relatively small movement of the pedal axis. So maybe another way of fixing this problem is to just shorten the spring. I will try out various things to make this idea work like I wanted to, but for now it's just a failure in which I put a lot of time and thought. But this is how it goes. Sometimes your projects don't work like you thought they would. Sometimes you can fix it and sometimes you just have to accept the failure and make something better with the experience you made. So I hope you liked the video. If so, please like and subscribe. I will keep you updated on the progress.